So if you get a little prompt that says to continue, make sure you click that. And without further ado, I will turn it over to you, Ms. Jones, and really excited to hear what you have to share with us today. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the library resources session. We're going to start with the library's webpage, which is library.columbusstate.edu. And we're going to go along this top banner here. So contact us. If we click on this, it has a staff directory, as you can see there. There's Ask a Librarian, and there's another little prompt here that you can click on. And that allows you to be able to ask a question. So if someone is available online, you can always ask a question there. And then we also have our department numbers here. If we look at events, this is going to give you information about different library events that are happening in the library. News, we click there. That's going to give you, there's nothing there now, but in the future, there could be something related to database or service interruptions as well as closures. So I'm going to go back to originally how it was showing up on the library page. Give me just a minute. And we're back to how it was in the beginning. Now, if we go up under here, we can look at about. If we click on the hours tab, the hours tab is going to show you the hours for the main library and for the music library. So the music library is the library that is on the River Park campus, which mostly has music items um, available. And then also under the about tab, you have faculty and staff directory again that you can get to, and then you have policies. If you click on the policies link, that's going to give you information about general policies, uh, cell phone, food, um, advertising, fines, and all those sorts of things. You can always go there to find more information. We're going to move to the next tab, which is collections. So I've already mentioned music library. Um, again, that is next to the Rose Center on the River Park campus. And then we also have archives and special collections. So if we click there, the archives is on the basement level of the library, and the hours are open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m., and 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. So here you can look at some of the collections, you can find finding page, and these are um, ways for you to be able to get access to things that are not in our uh, regular circulating form. Next, if we move to services. So under services, you see the first thing there is the Gill Find Catalog. So I'm going to click there. The Gill Find Catalog is the online catalog for Columbus State University. There are a couple of things you can do here. In this box here, you see access my library account. So your library account is how you can access things related to the library. And you do that via your one CSU login. So they're mentioning, they mention a couple of things here that you can do, such as remove books or take a request. So I'm just going to click on one of those. So say I was interested in doing that. So you could log in. And you would always want to log in on the first item here that says Columbus State Students, Faculty, and Staff. And once you do that, it'll take you into the system. I'm already logged in. So I'm just going to cancel that. Well, I'm not logged in there, but what we're going to do moving forward, we don't really need to log in for. Okay, so this is the online catalog. So I'm going to do an example of a state. So you could do a search here which says state anything. And notice that it says Columbus State University here. So that lets you know that you are searching Columbus State University only. So I'm going to click the advanced search because I want to do a more advanced search. So say, for instance, I put in learning and motivation. Now, where it says any field, you can actually change this to title, author, subject, journal title, publisher, ISBN, any of those things you like to search. I'm just going to leave it as it is. You can also change the publication date here. You can also add a line. You can change these Boolean operators to or or not. But I'm just going to keep it simple. I'm going to go ahead and click search. 
So this is so that you can see all the different types of items that show up here. So on the left hand menu navigation, you see the different formats that are available. So you have books here, you have um, journals, sometimes you might have things on demand. You can have all different kinds of things here, links to the full text of journals in the databases, government documents. So if there is something available online, you'll see an online access available there and you can click on the link. You also see uh, different the two libraries here, the sports library and the music library, and then you see the different library locations. So all of the circulating books, well, all of the books are on the third floor. So that includes reference, as you can see here, and then the main third floor, those are the circulating items. And then you also see the government documents are there as well. So that is where you need to go for those items. And once you click on the particular item, it will tell you exactly where it is. Most of the things that are showing up here actually um, show up as online access. And we also have our periodicals there as well, as you can see on number 13 here. So next, I want to show you how to do something called Bill Express. So let's go back to the library search page. So this is the original page we were on. You can also search the University System of Georgia Schools, which includes Columbus State University. So the, the item I'm talking about is Gill Express. So Gill Express is a service that allows you to order circulating books that are available in other University System of Georgia schools. So this means it is not available at Columbus State University, but it is available at another USG school, which is the University System of Georgia School. And I'm going to go through part of the way to request these items, but know that you can come back here and click on how to place a Gill Express request, and it shows you step by step how to do a request. So let's go back to advanced search. So now I want to change the search scope from Columbus State University to University System of Georgia. And I'm going to put that same search back in learning and motivation. And I'm going to click search. So once again, you can only search, you can only order print circulating books. So I'm going to change the format here on the left side of books. And I'm going to see what is available here. Okay, so say for instance, maybe I'm interested in, let's see. Let's try number four. So I'm going to click on check availability from other USG libraries. And once I do that, it tells me that it's available. This is a circulating book, meaning that it can be checked out. And the only place that has this is the University of Georgia. So I will click there on available. And then I will see request options. And then I will have to log in in order to be able to complete this request. But the important thing to remember is that if it happens to be, you can get this sent to any other USG uh, school. So if you live closer to another university from a Georgia school, you can actually get it sent there. So you don't have to get it sent to Columbus State University. And you can do that when you request the option. Okay, so you would sign in in order to see the request button. Okay, so that takes care of the Gill Funding Service. So now I'm going to go back to the library homepage. So remember, we were under services. So now we're going to take a look at Campus Transfer. Campus Transfer, it gives you instructions on how to request that a book be sent from the main campus to, the, to River Park or vice versa. And it tells you exactly how to do that within the Gill Funding Catalog. Next under services, you see something called interlibrary loan. And what interlibrary loan is, interlibrary loan is a service that's outside of the express. So it's a separate service. So if you cannot find a book that's available via the express, then you would go to interlibrary loan. And then you would also use interlibrary loan for all the journal articles 
that are not available within Galileo, which we'll get into in just a few minutes. So, clicking on the interlibrary loan link takes you directly into the system that we use for requesting interlibrary loan items. If I happen not to already be logged in, it would ask you to log into your main CSU. So I'm already logged in for my main CSU. So once you log in, you will click on create request. The default is set for article. So you will need to fill in everything with the star next to it. So you could copy and paste something that you found perhaps within Galileo. If it's an article request, you will get those online. So you would get an email telling you exactly how to log back into the system, how to access that PDF. So the important thing to remember is that once you receive that email, you have 30 days to go in and download that article, save it, print it, whatever it is you need to do with that article. Okay, then you need to verify your address and contact information, and then you want to click submit request. You can also choose books, so you can do that as well. If it's a book, again, that's not available via the Express, and then uh, if you have any other items, you can click on other. Okay, so I'm just going to print that out. So that's what you use for interlibrary loan. Also under services, you see something called tutoring at the library. So tutoring at the library, that would take you to the academic center for tutoring. And it would show you exactly how to submit a request for an appointment for tutoring. And it tells you the subject matter coverage. So you can definitely come back here. They do have a virtual appointment available. So you want to go there if you need some assistance. Okay, we're going to go back to the library page. So we're still moving along this banner here. So the database is actually all that's going to do is that's just going to show you all the databases that we have from A to Z. So you can go there to see exactly how many databases that we have, and those are the databases that are within that lane. I'm not going to click there because we're going to go to that lane here. Then the journal APV, that is going to allow you to put in a title of a journal, you can put a journal title, you can put a subject, or you can put in an ISSN. So say, for example, you put in journal education. You put that in, and you see all the different journals that come up. This little item here, if you click there, it's going to tell you exactly what years are available, and then you can navigate to the volume and the issue that you like. And you can download the PDF or the article that you're interested in. You definitely want to do that if you have a citation and you're trying to find the full text. Okay, and then the site index. So the site index, that's going to help you browse through all the items that are on this website. So now we're going to scroll down a little bit and we're going to go to Galileo. So Galileo stands for Georgia Library of Learning Online, and this is where you can find many full text journal articles. Once again, if you're not logged in to your MySpace, it does ask you to do that. Because I'm already logged in, it takes me directly to the home page. So this first link here, this is going to give you a way to search several different databases. At this point, this is not what I suggest you do. We're going to go to specific databases and we'll show you how to do that. So this is, that's our discovery page. So we're going to skip that. So here you see databases by subject. So this is where you can see all the different databases according to the subject. So you can click on view all subjects. And if you don't see what you want on the first page, you just keep going to next until you do. So I'm just going to do an example. So say you're interested in education, you click there, and it's going to give you a list of all of those databases. And they are in alphabetical order. I'm going to choose a more multidisciplinary database because we have people that are working on various subjects here. So let's say for instance, we want an academic state for city. So if you click on more info, that's going to give you a summary of that database. 
the express link. You can click that and you can save it and that will take you directly to this database if you want to go there again and not have to go through all these steps. If I click on Academic State Ultimate, that's going to take me into the database. And this is the Excel host vendor database. So anytime you see Excel host, you're going to see this interface. So here there are a couple of things you can do. So you can limit your results. So full text, I would not recommend limiting to full text because there is a way that you can set for the full text if it's not available in this database. You are going to click on scholars to be done. So peer review means that the publication in which the article where the article is going through an official editorial process that involves review and approval by the author's peers. So it means that people who are experts in the, in the current subject area have looked at this and they've read it. So most, but not all, scholar publications are peer reviewed. Some trade publications are peer reviewed as well. So you are going to click that. Publication date, you're welcome to put that in there. And then there's a way you can change the publication type or you can change the document. Here's where you see those billion operators again. So you have and or not, you can change that. You can also click the event all of these different fields that you see here. So you see text, you see author, title. You see a lot of different things appear in here. So I'm going to check them and see. And the only thing I've changed here is all the tools you've done at. I'm going to click search. And you see how many search results come up. So I can always go back up here and I can add further search terms here. I can also look at some of the subject headers that appear here and add those to my search. So if I like this or if I like this, I can go back and change that. Here I wanted to show you that you have several different types of things appearing here. So in some cases, you'll have a HTML appearing and then you'll have a PDF. So of course, you know that the PDF is the article exactly as it would appear in the journal. If you're in an EBSCO host database, let me just click on the title here just to show you. You'll also see those subject terms appearing again here. And then you have the app set. And there's several different things you can do under the series. You can use the citation button. Ms. So Jones, if you click on that, you are. Someone yes. in the chat is saying that they're having trouble understanding you. I don't know if it's because of the distance to the mic, but there is kind of a warped quality mm -hmm. of the audio right now. Some a couple of people are saying they're having issue. Are you can you like lean away from the mic a little bit? Oh, I'm not sure, but can you hear me better now? Yes, that is perfect. Thank you so much. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. No problem. Okay, so once again, I was saying if you click on the type button, you are able to choose the citation format that you like to use. It is not exactly correct, but you can uh, use it as a starting point, and from there you can um, edit it. So that's an option. You can email, you can print, you can save, and then you can also have the permalink. So that would definitely give you this article once again, and you'd be able to get right back to this article. And in the EBSCO host vendor database, you can click on listen to the HTML format and it will read it for you. You can also have it translated. Okay, I'm going to go back to the result list. If you hover over the piece of paper with a magnifying glass, that would also allow you to look at part of the abstract without having to click into the article as I just did. And then remember I was telling you about um, not using the full text option. So if you click on the find it button, this means that it's not available full text in Academic Search Ultimate, which is the database that you're currently in. If you click on the find it button, this tries to find the full text for you in another database that we subscribe to. So in some instances, you might be able to get to the full text. In this instance, it says that it's not available. 
but you also want to try to see if you can get to the full set. So in this case, you would want to do an interlibrary loan request for it if you really wanted this article. So that's just a quick overview of some of the options that are available in the EBSCOhost database. So now I'm going to return to Galileo by clicking on this link at the top. And we're back to the home page. So there's also something else you can use, which is called databases by type. So this allows you to view databases by the different types that you see available here. So you can click on the all type. So if you were looking for dissertations and thesis, you could click there and only get to the databases that have that, or all the other items that you see available here. If we scroll down a little bit more, once again, you have an option to look at all the databases that are within Galileo, and you can also use all journals. So this one is a little bit different from the one that we saw on the library homepage, but it works kind of the same way. You can put in the title or the ISSN, and then you see the online access if you have it, and it'll tell you the exact year, publication dates, the volume, and the issues that are available for text. Now I want to go back to the home page. Also, in this box, you can click on um, Galileo Database by Subject Type or Name. So you can put in something there and then click search. Now, when I was talking about the, the peer review option, sometimes if you have a question about whether or not a journal is really peer reviewed, there is a way that you can check that. So there's something called table directory. And that's what I'm typing in now. So you can click search. And table directory is a way for you to, um, it's really a way to find out more about the journal. I want to click on this one. And this will help you to make an accurate determination about where they're going to still be. So you can check the submission policy or the manuscript instruction on the journal's website, which you can see linked in here. So here at the top, you can search by title. So in most cases, you would want to put in the title of the journal that you're looking for. And we're just going to put in the journal registration just as an example. So you see many different items are found here. So I'm just going to see something. So Today I want to look at American Journal of Education. I click there. Okay, so there are methods that come up. So once you scroll down, you'll see the review option. So this tells you that this is peer review and it's a double blind peer review journal. That would answer your question about that. Um, you can also go to the journal's website by clicking on the journal um, website. And then also CCI snapshot. What this is, is the table classification index. And this gives you the journal ranking system based on the sector. So you can see more of there. And then also you have the alt metric reports. And this is a report um, of an overview of where and how often the article, articles are mentioned online that are found within this journal. So that is what I think would be helpful for you when using this database table directories. So now I'm going outside of Galileo and I'm going back to the library website. You have the CFU ePress. So the CFU ePress is a repository of, of the CFU library. So this contains the scholarly output of faculty, containing for research and also students for you to see feed and dissertations in here. So you can enter search terms and search for a file. Okay, next to the CSU ePress, you see subject guides. So subject guides, those are web geographies related to a particular subject area. So you can do all guides as you see here, or you can do by subject or you can do by the owner. So let's take a look at 
the research came at the CSG library. So I want to show you something that you can take a look at that might be useful for you in your study. So I'm going to go all the way to the bottom. Unfortunately, it um, classified it and see, but it is just at the CSG library. This is where you can find out more information about copyright and ethical use information if you click on that tab. So you have information here about HA citation guides, MLA guides, plagiarism, and uh, further ways in which to cite things when you have copyright information showing up here. And fair use, if you scroll further down. And then if you go over to another tab, you can click on research. You can also get to the liaison library link. And I'm going to show you where that is also in another area. And then if you look at CSG librarians and subject liaisons, this is where you can find out which liaison librarian is for your subject area. So of course anyone can help you, but you get more detail and more specific um, help if you get to the subject librarian for your particular area. And you have their contact information here and their phone number. So if you scroll down a little bit more, remember I mentioned Ask the Librarian, you want to click there. So if someone is available right now with chat for a librarian. If you don't want to put your name in, you can just leave it blank. That will help you be anonymous. You can put your question in and you click start chat. You can also use text librarian, you can also call, and you can also use the email. If we continue scrolling down on the library homepage, you'll have recommended reading. So this could change right now. There are graphic novels there because there is a graphic novel display in the library, but you're welcome to come back and see what recommended reading is showing up. You also have some popular databases. And then if you continue to scroll down, you see the hours once again. And you can go back and forth between the main library, which is um, the Sotomore Library and the Music Library, which we do have different hours. And then of course you have the map. And then if you continue to the bottom of the page, you can connect to see if you library. So you can see Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram both. So let's see if there's anything else I want to show you. So if you go to the top of the page, notice that you can do a search here. So this is more the discover page, so you don't actually have to go into the Bill Fine catalog. You can go here and it will combine a lot of different places and then you can click search. And you can also do Discover Galileo by clicking there. That's what it's already on. If you want to do search Bill Fine, you click that one. And if you want to search the website, you will click on that one. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing here for a minute. See if I have any questions. Did we have any questions that anybody wanted to bring forth? Does anyone have any questions? We can give you a minute to type. Thank you so much for me personally while they're typing. I, I know that there are resources that the library has out there, but it can be really overwhelming trying to go through all of those little nuances by yourself without kind of any direction. So I'm very, very grateful yeah. for understanding some of the, like there's a lot more ways of, of kind of working through that. Someone says, um, what hours are the Ask a Librarian staffed? If you have that schedule system. Oh, sure. So if you check the hours, it's most of the time when the library is open. So let me just give you the rundown of when the library is open now. But it's right now it's 
Monday through uh, Thursday would be 8 a.m. So around 12.30 a.m. And then Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Saturday is 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. Then 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. And then Sunday is And then Sunday is 1 p.m. to 12 p.m. And also, if you need to do um, research consultations with your liaison librarian, you can always contact them in email, and they'll be glad to have research consultations with you. You're welcome. And like I said, if it's not available for, and if not, if we're not open, and you have a question, you can still go ahead and put it in there, and we'll get back to it. It'll show up on our dashboard, and somebody will get back with you. Any more questions before we conclude, everyone? Thank you so much for taking some time out of your day today to share with us. I know that's not the ideal thing to do on a Saturday afternoon. And of course, everyone that showed up and has participated in the writing retreat today, thank you so much for making this um, such a huge success across all of the different research rooms. And if there's no other questions, that officially concludes the 2021 Spring Writing Retreat. Thank you so much, everyone. I hope that you have a great rest of your day. As a reminder, this and the other session.